Hi, everybody. Welcome to Custody Matters Live. My name is Danica Joan with my co-host Bud Vino and several other faces. So, um, Bud, would you like to welcome our, our guests to the show? Oh, I would. Where do I start, Danica? First of all, air date of the show, Wednesday, January 29, 2027, 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Custody Matters Live on the Dad Talk Today Network, we're proud to say, uh, with Eric Carroll and company. Uh, and we have a variety of guests today, Danica. I'm going to let you do all the intros. I was so excited. I, as I said, we have sometimes behind the scenes, I come up with different little pet names quickly. We've got Sweet Caroline. We're going to let you introduce her. And Dawn, we love her. And there's some people that I've never met before. Uh, uh, Coach Ed, I saw. And there's some people that will be at the conference we're going to discuss uh, at length today that we're very excited to have. So in advance, thank you to everybody joining us today and Will at the conference and to everybody else there. Yes, thank you so much for coming. So just a, and this is just a few of the people who are participating in a planning team. So you might ask what planning, what are we planning and what kind of team is it? We are creating, this, this team is coming together uh, from all walks of life, all uh, branches of family advocacy so that we can put on a spring conference, April the 24th and 25th to honor and recognize Parental Alienation Awareness Month. So, um, super excited. This is something that we have that's not been long in the planning and uh, and yet I reached out asking you know for people to be a contribution and then there's just there there's probably double the people that are here on the screen there's double the people who couldn't make it to today's show um, that are part of helping us to put this together. So uh, speaking of so what is what does this conference look like and where is it at? I'm going to go ahead and share the screen and show you a little bit of our, our little um, little promo. Get it on. There we go. All right. Uh, and I'll go ahead and read it. It is uh, Kids Need Both Ink pre presents Guardians and Gatekeepers. So, um, and it's a family advocacy conference for educators, lawyers, and mental health professionals who are impacted by high conflict families. Um, and what I really, uh, I think it's always been my view or my strategy that, of course, I can help people one on one, and I have. However, to really make an impact, like take a big bite out of uh, the work that we do, is to reach out to the professionals because I'm sure each one of us have an example of a professional who were who was not informed as they should be in their own case that actually became part of the problem. Is that true? <laughs> I know it, it was in my case, and, and that's why it is I'm so passionate about creating, uh, educating the professionals. Speaking of, we are, we are set up to offer continuing education credits, whether it's the CLEs for law, uh, lawyers and paralegals, uh, CMEs for mediators, um, and also in the mental health field, um, and and for the educators so super excited about that are you are you excited are you ready uh to know who are who's some of our guest speakers are yes I am. go ahead <laughs> so excited okay so our own dr mark roseman awesome mm -hmm. uh, mark ludwig oh great mark ludwig uh catherine mcwheely now, just to give you, I should give you a little um, little background. So, dark, Dr. or I would say, uh, Mark Ludwig. I'm going to have you guys share what you know about Mark Lud Ludwig, uh, so our viewers will know. Go. Uh, I, I'll say Mark's one of the hardest working people inside of our community, trying to teach the nation about legislation, and he works day and night, and he's so good at what he does very professional in his approach and uh, to have somebody like him there uh, you, you definitely are getting the cream of the crop yeah I mean the thing is is I, I know for me I have no comprehension of how legislation works and I get that that's the source yep it's huge yep. Um, 
the other one, another one I'd mention is Catherine McWheely. She, her background is in law, law enforcement. That's where she came from. So she, she totally gets how, you know, you're, you're given a, a directive of what to do when you're dealing with a high conflict situation, but even uh, the professionals, the law enforcement, they get called in on a domestic, uh, you know, they're humans, so their hearts are involved. And many times they're, if, if not given the proper training, they could sway uh, and actually become an implement, an accomplice to, um, you know, the, an alienator. Or something or somebody that's manipulating the situation uh, let's see here who else Dawn McCarty she is going to be also a speaker and she's right here Dawn would you like to share a little bit about who you are and um, what you bring to the conference sure I'm um, the chair for the Florida chapter of the um, National Parents Organization and I'm also an associate producer of the Racing Family Film documentary, so we'll be bringing that too on um, the Saturday uh, events. And just to also present what our shared parenting report card is for the state of Florida, we got a C, so we're gonna really try and focus on um, ways that we can improve that grade. Awesome, awesome. I was trying to get you spotlighted. There you go, after you <laughs> talked. <laughs> oh my goodness. One of these days I'm gonna figure this thing out. I had, um, I'm super, you know, how, but, but Dawn, you've shared with me a little bit about this, this has touched you personally. Would you like to share a little bit about uh, why it is that you're involved? Uh, sure, I, um, I'm the child in the scenario, so I'm, I've not been in a, a race mom or anything like that, but I can speak to the long-term effects of how this affects children and the trauma that they've suffered and how we can use our voices and, uh, and how I could use my voice to speak for the children that can't speak today or haven't been able to speak you know, all along. And there's so many of us, the age ranges from happening now to full grown adults. Sometimes they're into their, you know, they, they just realize that they've been a part of this. And then there's others that are, are distant family members or extended family members that are just now beginning to realize that this is also affecting them. I think that is very awesome. And one of the things that I wanted to do is that when we picked speakers, I wanted to make sure that we we had like a cross section of the community who has has personally experienced a high conflict custody situations in their lives. And some of them are the parents, some are the grandparents, and some are the children, the adult children. Um, I know there's a, there's a young woman that um, is, I believe she actually, yeah, she is committed to also come. And I don't know if she's gonna do a full blown presentation, but she is, um, she's actually one of the, what do you call it, contestants to become Miss USA. Uh, her name is Abigail. And when I had a conversation with her recently, I said, you know, she says, well, you know, I'm really a stand uh, for preventing and reducing suicide. So I started inquiring with her more and, she's, and she said, yeah, you know, um, when I was a child, my parents divorced and it got really nasty and she was older and she says it didn't affect me so much, but my, my sister, my younger sister really, it hit her hard and she uh, began attempting to try to kill herself. Mm -hmm. And, and I thought, well, this is, this is something that needs to be uh, said, you know, yes. and I know that with, I know in the mental health field, there's the ACEs study, uh, adverse childhood events is what it stands for, I believe. And there's like this, this like scale of all of the, these markers that indicate that if this child has been through all of these different traumas, they have an increased, um, a, a, a increased disposition for, for end, ending up in the system or right. you know, bad disorder. things happening mm -hmm. for the, in their lives. So um, yeah, I thought that would be really uh, very helpful. Um, let's see, all know, huh? I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it'll be good. It's always nice to have, you know, that, that, um, you know, a beautiful woman, you know, that's wearing a crown and stuff like that. It makes us all feel special. 
Okay, so we have Wendy Perry. Everybody knows Wendy Perry. She's, uh, she's out of Dallas. She's an advocate uh, and she has her own online support group as well as many. Uh, she's always uh, speaking in, in several places. What else? Uh, let's see. Ooh. Okay, so uh, Thomas Lemons. Tom Lemons is from Central Florida. He uh, has been for years promoting uh, uh, false abuse allegations. So many times when we find ourselves in, these, in this situation, what's the best attack to go for but to make the other person uh, seem like a threat, like a safety threat for the child to, to persuade the courts to marginalize their uh, them or to completely cut them out of that child's life based upon uh, domestic violence, um, even arrests. I know that I worked with a client and he had been, he'd been arrested for domestic violence. And by the time I got him, uh, was working with him, he was terrified of like, oh my gosh, I just hope I get supervised visitation with my daughter. And, um, and of course, over, over a six month period, he, he went through mediation. He got everything that he set out to get. Plus he got courage, got courage and realized that, um, you know, and stopped. Uh, this is a very fearful process for all of us, you know, just fear of um, losing a relationship with our child based upon uh, being outwitted by the other other side. Uh, let's see here, Mark. Did I mention Mark, Mark Ludwig? Yes. And I know some of you guys know Mark Ludwig. So some of you, I want you guys, I'm not going to be the only one talking here. I want you to share what you know about what, oh, no, 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 we did. We talked about him, the court thing. Um, the big time into legislation and things like that. Um, I think you mentioned Dr. Roseman too. Dr. Roseman, Dr. Uh, Roseman. Dr. Mark, I mean, uh, Mark Ludwig, we had on the show last week. We want to appreciate everybody out there. That show got a lot of views, a lot of reactions. So thanks yeah. for that. We appreciate that. And Dad talked today for, for broadcasting that. That was, that was a great one. Uh, there's a, a variety of, of people and you see in the news and things that are going through these sort of custody issues. And I, I hate to bring this up. I, I just saw across the ticker. I got to verify it, but it, it appears that Kobe Bryant has died in a helicopter crash. It's um, true, my man. Which is, uh, I, I just found out now. Yeah. The reason I bring that up, number one, thoughts and prayers um, to his family. Um, yeah. He's a great player. As a Celtics fan, um, huge amount of respect. And as a human being, my point to that is, too, his life is precious. Um, so uh, a lot of us are getting together uh, through pain um, and, uh, and using that pain um, to spin it into good. So um, I don't know how I incorporated that. A little hazy. I just found that out right now. So again, but again, we move forward. Thoughts and prayers to the uh, Bryant family. And uh, again, you mentioned some great people. Danica, you mentioned Mark Ludwig. You mentioned Dr. Mark Roseman. Uh, we're hoping, I, I discussed, I had a, a little conversation not long ago with Jesse Weiner, a, a real brief one with uh, attorney Melissa Isaac this morning, and uh, attorney Isaac doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to try and coax her down there for a little vacation uh, so we can get her down there to Florida as well, right, uh, Eric? So, and uh, Dad Talk Today Network, uh, we're looking to broadcast it. Um, it's, uh, it. It's really building a lot of momentum, and I know you're excited about it, and we all are, Dan. Yeah, yeah, I was going to I was going to save that for sure, but might as well dig into it. So, so part of the structure of the conference, it's a two day conference, it's all day uh, uh, workshops on the 24th of April, uh, from all of these different speakers and a few more that we not mentioned. But um, not only can they get com uh, continuing education credits for them, but we're planning on doing a live stream through Dad Talk Today Network, uh, so that people who can't actually physically make it, they can actually, they can see it throughout the day. So I'm super excited, and thank you, thank you so much for, for um, being on the team and getting the word out, because I think that's why we all do what we do, is to make it accessible. I was, um, I was thinking about, I was talking to, to Bud earlier about, uh, the difference that some of the advocates have made uh, in my life. And one of them was Dr. Richard, Richard Warshock, 
I stumbled across in 2001 the term parental alienation and started digging deeper and ended up buying his book, Divorce Poison. And, um, you know, and it's my mission that whether we get him on the show or on a conference or not, it's my mission to reach out to him just to acknowledge him. And, um, and I'm sure there's always, there's somebody that's touched your lives. That's an advocate that really shifted things for you. And it would be Dr. Warshak for me, for sure. Um, and, Ooh, did I mention Dr. Michael bone and Dr. Robert Evans? They're awesome. Gonna be tag teaming. They're going to be the two of them. They had this presentation. They actually came, uh, to my 2012 conference and spoke, and it was wonderful having two people on the stage and they're bouncing back and forth. It's that, that energy, I guess that's the, you know, that's the Bud and Danica kind of thing that you bounce <laughs> off <laughs> with each other and um, bring it, you know. Well, and I think, Jan Janica, I'm sorry, I, I tend to walk on you a few times during the show and apologize, so I'm gonna do it again. I apologize. Um, that was one thing when, when the people are in the group, um, Caroline was one of them too, and Don, it's right when we get on, everybody's almost, it's like an energy that's, again, we've talked about tangible, we're so excited and have so much respect. Caroline brought so many great ideas on Monday when we had our meeting, and so did Don, and we're, we're just kind of meshing all those ideas and seeing how they're going to fit perfectly, and they will, right? We talked about that law of attraction sort of everything is happening exactly the way it's supposed to, and we're right on our perfect path, and it's all going to fit perfectly, and you see it come together quick because of that sort of love and momentum and energy we have for each other, Danica, absolutely. Energy is the key word, baby. Definitely. You know, um, this is interesting because one of our one of our uh, our team, our planning team, uh, Lisa, and she wanted to be on the show as long as, along with Kim um, today, but they but couldn't. But she, I, I was, I ran into her at an event last night, and she says, you know, I know we would have crossed paths eventually, but she says you, it's just like for her, she came, she's like, I will do anything for you because you really made a difference in my life, and. And uh, I mean, there's just like nothing in the world that could compare uh, by well, then to be acknowledged for your contribution to someone else, someone's family. Let, and you know, I'm going to just say, this isn't to self-aggrandize here at all, but I'm going to bring up the message. I'll just say that Melissa Isaac sent me this morning, the aforementioned wonderful men's rights attorney and attorney in general. The timing of her message was impeccable. And it's funny how that, because we've talked about Danica privately and on the air, that there's no such thing as coincidences, right? There are no such things. Mm -hmm. um, but you never know how you're going to affect somebody in, in a positive way. Words can cut hard or they can build people up. And remember, confident, happy people, they build people up. They don't attempt to cut them down. And so, again, I want to thank Melissa because I won't get into it uh, personally, but it was such a, a short, just awesome, um, energetic, respectful wonderful message and so that's the sort of thing and i sent her one to uh eric about her awesome show that's how it started i congratulated her i said you're all class and she is um so that's the sort of people that you need and we have those people here you know yeah. we, we've got all those people here together and we're gonna do it down and again we're gonna do it in florida which uh, for a new england boy like me i'm good with that i'm good with that Yes. Oh, it's going to be, it's like April, at the end of April is the most beautiful time to be in Florida. Um, speaking the Portuguese man of war aren't floating around then, are they, Danica? The Portuguese man of war are usually around like June or July, right? Am I right? Or is it I, Japan? I don't know anything about that. Uh, well, you look up Portuguese man of war. I'm, a, I'm like a, a oh. frightened schoolgirl when it comes to ocean. I, I saw Jaws when I was young and it's never been the same. So again, we'll, we'll stay away from the beach and but we'll just, we'll take some pictures. Well, what's great about it is we've got the Atlantic coast and we have the Gulf coast and the Gulf coast is completely different than the Atlantic right. Good coast. Point. We great usually point. don't get yeah. stinging and like uh, jellyfish and stuff like that in the Gulf coast. However, right. we do We're get red to the Atlantic coast. So yes, good point, good point. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't get a chance to acknowledge Caroline. She brings Zen to our conference. <laughs> Caroline, <laughs> Hi. Also, she was one of the subjects in a racing family documentary uh, that's connected to the National Parents Organization of which Dawn is representing. 
Uh, but Caroline, what kind of Zen are you bringing to our conference? Well, I think it um, keeps adding every minute, but um, we'll start off with uh, the erasing family. Like you just said, I'm, I'm an interviewee, interviewee in the film. And when I met you, discovered that you and I started this journey 20 years ago. So it was about the same time when there was really nothing out there. So when I start, when I found out what it was, I just decided to go on a healing journey to become Zen because I definitely wasn't Zen back then. I'm not really Zen now either, but, um, <laughs> but um, so one of the things that uh, was part of my journey was becoming an energy healing practitioner. I like how Bud was talking about energy work because the, the, the universe tends to collect people at the right time, just like he said, for whatever it is that's meant to happen next. And I think that that's really powerful with what's going on here. Uh, I also do, um, uh, I'm a life leadership and spiritual coach. So I use the energy work and the coaching kind of together to help people who have been through trauma. And then we have my partner and I who are going to be speaking, Noel Moo and myself on, um, uh, got the title. You want the title or do you want what it's about? I want to know what it's about because we okay. haven't actually created the publication about. yet. So basically we do, we're, we have a, a duo called In Divinity and we do healing medicine music. It's played at 432 hertz, which is a, a, a healing vibration. So that goes along with all the energy, you know, that just to bring people into a more safe space. Um, and so the, the, the um, focus of the talk kind of combines everything. Um, it's to bring awareness to the traumatic effects of gaslighting and other traumas and how to heal from a victim role that develops unconsciously in those that are impacted from trauma. Um, and the goal is to empower and heal with, um, through a combination of modalities at the levels of the mind, body, and spirit. So, this, like you guys, and I've said this to you before, Eric and uh, Coach Ed weren't on before, but you guys are powerfully, powerfully bringing, you know, change into those systems. And once these changes, or as these changes are happening, there's still very painful things that are happening, and their ne healing needs to happen. And, you know, I'm going to advocate for healing. And so it's important that people learn how to um, come to a center in themselves so they can be prepared for their children to come back to them. Um, and for me, you know, I mean, when this first started for me, I was like on the floor, like in Eat, Pray, Love, you know, crying and depressed. Yeah. And I'm sitting here, now I'm standing in front of people singing and doing this. And I'm like, <gasps> so um, I think it's so important for that healing to happen and to be able to be advocates, you know, for people who've gone through this, because this is such a powerful and, and, um, painful situation to have to go through learning how to how to do um self uh self-care um forgiveness work grief work you know that type of thing those are the things that are all involved with um pretty much what we're gonna go through you know or talk about from from a psychotherapy perspective and from the body perspective I, I love it. I love it. That really kind of creates the intention for going into the conference because ultimately we get that it's a a really um, it's a disempowering topic um, because all of those who are participating uh, are impacted, if not personally, but impacted professionally by these hurting families. And um, there's got there's more than we educate ourselves, but it's more than just educate, educate, educate. It's it's about finding peace within. Right. And, and a, big, a big thing I wanted to add that's, I'm glad you brought that up. It's just, we're, we're starting to do a podcast on trauma and how to heal from trauma. So one of the things that we say is to be gentle with yourself and, for, and, and firm with your healing. And so that way, as you heal, but just remembering to be gentle. I have a bug. <laughs> um, I'm not going to be gentle with him right now. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but that's, you're right. You know, I mean, it's important for people to have that um, with them so they can get through this stuff. And it's not that easy to get through it. It's all over the place, all online. It's very overwhelming, even for people who've gone through the work and healed, you know, it's still very overwhelming and it's important to have this out there 
So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm so grateful for you for doing this and bringing me in here and thank you. Thank well, you. Yeah. If I could say, I want to thank you too, Carolyn. There's certain people on that energetic level, I know, and I was really pulled right to Carolyn real quickly. And, and it's, it's not the first time you're told you have an overwhelming energy. I'm quite sure of that. Um, I applaud you, um, especially for your candor with where you came from to where you are. You deserve it. Um, you've worked hard on a personal level. Just getting to know you is, in the short time I have, you're awesome. You're one of the people I can't wait to hug, which everybody down there is getting one, a nice one, a genuine one, an energetic one. Yeah. And, and speaking of energetic, I see a smile from Don. I, again, I thank you very thank humbly. You. Thank you so much, bud. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to meet you. <laughs> and, and Don, who has the big smile as always, is so uh, monumental and instrumental, Danica, behind the scenes. And she has all these ideas and she's so smart. And I, as I said to you privately on the phone, I said, she's very, seems business minded. She's very like task oriented and, and really excited and, and excited to implement all those ideas. So you're going to spoil uh, me. You keep talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for all thank the work you for the opportunity. Done. So it's, it's interesting because like, oh, um, I also wanted to, Dawn to share um, our first conversation. It was like a Friday night or something. And yeah, it was a Friday afternoon or whatever. And you called me um, saying, hey, you know, I'd like to do a conference, something like that. I'll let you tell this story. Oh my gosh, I slept so many times since then. Um, and, we've talked a couple of times on our NPO group and our racing family group about what can we do to start getting NPO out there? What can we do to start getting people aware of racing family and getting that out there? And, and a lot of it has to do with the grassroots information being transmitted or taken to the people. So Dr. Childress has even mentioned about, you know, interest in coming, interest in coming to Florida and speaking to legislators and and really helping with that. So you were the first person I thought of, and because uh, I'm like, wow, she's right here. We're like neighbors almost, a, a little bit of ways, but we're real really close. So why not try and make this like a group conference thing? So I call called her up and I said this, and then she's like, well, I'm we're we're kind of already starting one, so this is great timing. <laughs> so it really did worked out really great. But great minds think alike. Oh, it attracts, you know, uh, I, I have no doubt that you guys all came together like, like this, this magnet to this vortex of, uh, like this event that's happening and you just, and it's like, no, oh, it happens. And I <laughs> tell you, I just go where I'm taken and I just follow the flow. And that's how I ended up here. I, I don't know how, how I got here. I, I just, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's such a, such a perfect somebody, way to put it, Don. That was amazing. That was awesome. <laughs> I've got to share with, okay, so a friend of mine, Philip Rand said, it doesn't take a massive amount of people to create a movement. It takes a few committed people uh, focused on one cause who won't shut up. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, was I've good. never been good at shutting up, so I'm I fit right in. <laughs> and Danica, we had uh, also, you met, we have, I believe here, Coach Ed as well, who I don't really know yeah. that well. But I'm excited to do that, Coach Ed. Thanks for taking the time out. I, I think, don't mind calling you that. Yes, I get joining us today. I think we met in uh, in Tampa when uh, Dr. Rosman came a couple of months ago. Okay. Yes, you were. Yeah, you were one of the panelists for um, introducing the, right before the Erasing Family documentary was presented at that church. Yeah, that was the That's Center correct. for Manifestation in Tampa. Yeah. That's correct. With Dr. Roseman, right? That's awesome. I mean, that's how it works. Uh -huh. so, you, you are actually an ambassador for Erasing Family, or at least you've gone through the training, and that's you know you you kind of came up and said you wanted to be a part of helping get that out there. So that's, I, you know, I thought, why not? Why not bring you in and help with this? And speaking of that, we will bring, be doing the Erasing Family documentary. We'll be uh, uh, presenting it on Saturday morning. So Friday is the all day conference with all the speakers. Saturday, we're going to have a panel discussion of, um, 
that's also going to be in, include community leaders because I really want us to be able to have this panelist and you know this panel in fact that's how I met Dr. Mark Roseman was I added him to my panel in my 2012 conference and because mm -hmm. uh, I wanted I wanted clergy I wanted law enforcement I wanted teachers I wanted um all kind kinds of uh, like a broad a broad slice of the community um to see what it's like on their side dealing with high conflict families so we're going to do a panel discussion on saturday morning leading into a racing family documentary along with q a and then finally like the grand finale is the bubbles of love event that some yeah, of you may I be like aware of. when we're hoping that ginger will be able to join us as well and if if she can we're trying we're thinking about doing a big premiere of the official um, a racing family impact campaign for the state of Florida. We've already started doing our screenings, but that was practice. So now, we're, you know, if we can really make the, the Saturday event a big one and have Ginger there and it turns out really good, then it'll be um, a lot, uh, really easy to just have that uh, be our official kickoff and start yes. getting this film into yeah. all of the cities around the state. And I'm sorry, just think, Danica, we'll be able to look on the big screen and then look over and see Carol, and then look back and see the big screen, see Ginger and all these people. They'll be right there. We can pinch them. We can pinch them. They'll be right there. So everybody's going to come down and join us. It's going to be awesome. It's, it's by design, awesome. bud. It's by design. By design. <laughs> I'm so there excited. There you go. Um, I found, just to give you a little taste of, okay, so the venue, the venue is the Polk Museum of Art Auditorium. It is, they're connected with Florida Southern College. Florida Southern College is one of the premier private schools um, in the state of Florida that happens to be in Lakeland, Florida, my hometown. Um, and, and to be honest, it is like literally like one block from my home. So I'm like, I get to walk to the conference, so. Yes, we're all gonna stack up with Danica. It's gonna be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness though, uh, it's gonna be amazing, Danica. And I wanna thank everybody again in advance for joining us on the show and also everybody out there for watching the people that will join us I, down there. It's gonna I, be I have one question regarding uh, something that I threw this morning. Uh, in a, in a text way um, regarding Ron and Sherry uh, Palmer. Uh, Danica, I guess you said you met them before. I'm sorry, uh, what is it? Who is it that you said? Well, you said Ron and Sherry Palmer. I'm familiar with them. Yeah, I've interviewed them before. Yep. And that's something that I can I can check with them uh, if they're, you know, they might be willing to, to, to come to Lake That would be. And the sounds, no, maybe one of them. That'll be um, wonderful. That's a great idea. I'll reach out to them and I'll talk to you, Danica, behind the scenes. I'll reach out to them if, if, it, if it's uh, if appropriate. I think that's great. Okay. They're great people. They will come from a different perspective, from the, you know, the, 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 all the, the, the constitutional rights. And actually, uh, I'm a walking testimony of what they do because. Uh, my my divorce case has been reopened back in January 18 uh, regarding custody. Uh, Mom wanted a relocation out of state, and I had to be pro se. And I definitely took anything they they teach and they have in practice. And here in Tampa, I made a big wave. Uh, in divorce, when kids are in the middle, there are no winners. No. Uh, but I've said, did I win? Well, mm, the other party didn't get to relocate. The other party didn't get the school they wanted. So I got what I wanted. Is that winning? No, it's not winning. But I got what I wanted. So I am a walking testimony because the other party had three attorneys in the process. And nobody got what they were asking for. And the only way I did it, and I put mm, the core staff on the corner, was using uh, constitutional rights. So yeah. I think that if they can come and give a glance, because it's really deep, the topic. And we have a lot of speakers here. But they also run something in, uh, about custody, um, uh, alienation. 
And uh, I think their yeah, perspective yeah, the, yeah, is going to be people. an eye opening for a lot of people and very, very useful as well. And I was thinking because every year we see this bubble of love happening and I see that something on the news and Tampa is so calm. And I say, well, somebody has to make some noise. And that's a nice, peaceful, simple event. Stop, for instance, 10 minutes uh, at noon, everybody inside, outside, and do something. But, you know, I was wondering how we can start uh, you know, promotioning that. And I talked with Don and I said, well, we are doing something in Legland. And that's how the ball started rolling. And so it's, it's interesting. That's awesome. Hey, Albert, That's right. yeah. Come help me push this boulder up this hill. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, guys, it reminds me on the Mark Ludwig show, the first one on the Dad Talk Today Network we did last week. We talked about, we analogized with sports because Mark likes to do that, right? And I do too, uh, admittedly. But we need everybody. We need all different types. It takes all different positions, and we're all on the same team here. So, again, uh, I'm excited. I thank you to, to the coach and to everybody here. Danica. And, and to I, you, Danica, I think that's understated. I don't think I did that. I thank everybody else, but Danica <laughs> worked so hard behind the scenes. She's be so beautiful inside and out, and she's got so much passion and excitement. How couldn't I follow her? Aww. It's just, you know, there's something I wanted to touch on because Coach Ed said something about, uh, actually different ones of you have said it. How can someone get involved? And there's a couple of ways. You guys are familiar, some of you are familiar with with Bubbles of Love Day, which is also April 25th is Parental Alienation Awareness Day. Why we call it Bubbles of Love Day is because um, Sarvi Emo actually started it. She's from Canada and she, and the whole concept is everybody, if when you go to at 12 o'clock, wherever you are, go to a, a local park or whatever, take some time and blow bubbles because bubbles represent that, that childhood innocence, that fun. And when we create uh, like an event around it, maybe we go to uh, like a farmer's market or whatever, we can have literature on the table, lots of bubbles, a bubble machine, and uh, bubbles attract children. Children bring their parents. Then the conversation can naturally start. I love uh, that. I love it. And it's so positive because this area, there's so much resignation that we don't want to add to that. We want to add to, you know, hope and light into the conversation. So that's one way. Another way is that's super easy is you may not be aware that every muni municipality, city or county across the United States issues proclamations um, on like a monthly basis, all you have to do is ask for one. So when you call up the, the city hall, you say, hey, I would like to have a proclamation issued um, in April to recognize Parental Alienation Awareness Month or day. Um, and they'll tell you, well, fine, get, send us an email on what you want us to, to print on that certificate and then come in on this date and we will hand you the certificate so that the city is acknowledging and recognizing Parental Alienation Awareness Month in your hometown. So I can, I have the templates, it's super easy. It just takes, um, if, just imagine everybody who's watching requested a proclamation in their area, how, how many more people would know about parental alienation. Yeah, um, Danica, I, I'd like to say something real quick about Sarvi. Um, you were talking about how, uh, Lud, what's his name, Ludwig was your um, savior, basically, from what oh, you were Oh, um, it was, uh, no, it was, it was Dr. Richard Warshak. Warshak, okay, okay. So Sarvi was actually mine. Um, when I found, I, I found out about the words parental alienation from the therapist who's a, who was a forensic therapist who told me about it and then years later denied that she ever said it. We'll, we'll let that one go. 
Um, however, with Sarvi, that's when I, if, uh, I started looking online because I couldn't for years and years and I could not find anything about parental alienation at all. This was back in um, 2000, I think. And finally I found, um, uh, what's the name of the group? What's the name of the group she started? Um, when parental alienation, no wait. Organization. Yes, yes. AAO, yes. Yeah. So I found her and she was just starting it. She hadn't even started the bubbles of love yet. And somehow we connected and I ended up on the phone with her for like two hours and she was telling me her story and I was telling her what I was going through and she's, 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 you know, encouraging me. And that was when I was rock bottom in my, you know, most depressed um, moments. And if it was, she was like my life giver. It was, it was amazing. And the fact that being involved in this and for you guys to do this on Saturday with the bubbles of love is huge for me. And I just wanted to share that because that's 20 years of the big circle coming, you know, coming full circle from the beginnings of this, of, and, of this meeting. And so, I, you know, something to point out, yeah, we're all a hot mess when we get into this work mm -hmm. and we get that we couldn't be the faces and the, and the leaders without a, a you know, an, uh, some healing that's had to be done for us. And I just acknowledge you, Caroline, you, you're just so calm. And I guarantee that it wasn't that, that's not who you were 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, but now you, I am, but I'm hiding it. it under the screen. So go ahead. <laughs> but it, it, you know, it, I guess it, the thing is, is we some, a lot of times we want to put our pain into something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just like yeah. huge to, well, to put that in there. And one um, of the things that I advocate, I don't mean to interrupt, but it's important that I stick it in here is anger is actually not rage. Anger is actually a, um, a what's the word I want to use? Passion. It's just a passion. It drives us into doing something that means something to help other people. That's all that anger is there for. Um, for the most part is just to recognize that use the energy of anger and put it out like, like, like we're doing here because they're still, I mean, that's what we heal from, but we can still use it to create. And I would, it's, I'm sorry. I, you just said you, it was really important. It's really important. I have to just interject because this is something just this morning I was discussing uh, with my wife in terms of anger and how a lot of times, I think when you recognize, as you said, where, what that anger is and where it's coming from, um, and, you, and when you don't allow certain things to control your emotions because you recognize it, you go, whoa, certain light bulbs go off. And anger is just, as you said, it's pain, it's depression turned inward, as Dr. Malfi likes to say on The Sopranos, but it's true. Um, it, it's all those egoic traits um, that pull you in those directions off your course. So these sort of things where we came together, like, wow, um, serendipitously, right? Happy accident, but there's no such thing. Um, so when you realize that too, even through the pain that, okay, this is a horrible situation, but I'm supposed to be right here because it's going to teach me when you learn, everything is an opportunity, not an obstacle. It's an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to grow. And that's what we're doing. And I can't wait to do that with all you folks down in April. I'm excited about it. In Thanks person and broadcast by Eric Carroll, Dad Talk Today Network. So excited. So excited. Thank you. And our time is up. Sorry. Our time is up again, yet again. Okay. Um, oh, well. Thank you guys all for being this small group of people committed to one cause that won't shut up. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, it's a good way to bring me up, bring me back in, Janica, quickly. Thank you to everybody again. Wednesday, the 29th of January, 2020, going out of, uh, right around what? 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, right around there. It was a great show, everybody. Thank you for contributing. Thank you for everybody in advance again for coming down there. And thank you, folks, everybody out there for listening and watching. We love you. Next week, Custody Matters is live. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, you guys. Bye-bye.